and then eventually, I don't know, I kind of took a look at myself in the mirror one day, uh, decided that I didn't like what I saw, just hated myself. Uh, things have got to change from there on, which things did slowly, but surely they did change from there on. Got off the heroin, got off the crack cocaine, uh, still struggling with cannabis, but you know, things are, things are getting on an even keelish sort of now. So yeah, there has been support on the neighbourhood. There's good drug clinic clinics or clinics that deal with drug and alcohol around there. Um, they are good places. No, well, it's due to them they help me get through it. And there's, a, there's also a drop-in centre on the on the manor for any drug addicts, alcoholics, or whatever. They can just drop in and use the computers, talk to staff, uh, and so on. I know I never actually used the welcome place because I didn't want to mingle with them sort of people. Because to use that place, you've got to mingle with them people. A lot of them are still on drugs. They just go there to use the place. Uh, so I never actually used the welcome place, the drop-in centre. But the, as far as the clinics and the, the doctors and that and the key workers that you get allocated, they're brilliant around there. I think they're really good. Uh, I'll never look back since, since I got involved with them. It was the best thing I ever did. As a place to live, it's it, the neighbourhood. It's a bit depressing. It can be depressing at times. It's uh, once you get in there, you feel trapped, uh, and it's hard to get back out of there once you're in the system of the going through the housing associations. They, it's it's as if they try and keep you there. Community would mean to me like uh, community spirit. Everyone knowing each other, everyone helping each other out. That would, but that's not the case on the manor it's not like that it's not like that around there everyone was each each to their own you know i mean i've got neighbors that i never talk to and they never talk to me i don't know their names don't really want to know they don't want to know me and that's just the way it is around there each to their own and kind of like survival of the fittest sort of thing you know it's you're on your own there you know unless you haven't got family or whatever you know you you literally on your own there isn't a lot of community spirit around there at all not at all really yeah depressing bit mm. of a depressing place yeah, i suppose you, uh, your home's what you make it any i guess but uh, as a community not much spirit around there at all mm. for somebody that didn't know the area it could be quite a fearful place to live uh, I know a lot of people, I, I guess it's still kind of home to me, I've been, we've been there for years now, so it's, I still call it home, I feel sort of comfortable there, because I've spent so many years there, but also at the same time a bit uncomfortable, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I'm now settled with a family, but it was never like that, I mean, uh, we had, uh, my partner's got two kids, uh, I mean I've got four of my own, but that's another story. So, um, but yeah, uh, we went through the mill together really, and um, the kids saw a lot and witnessed a lot themselves, and uh, which which sort of traumatised them in a way, but in a funny kind of a way, they've learnt a lot from our mistake or my mistake, like the drugs, for example. I think I was probably very naive to drugs when I went into drugs, but I think my two kids or I call them stepkids, they've got a bit more of a clue on how it all goes. So I, I think a bit more education on it now. So I think that'll help deter them, if anything, because they are two good kids. Like. So uh, I think that that's, it's kind of like, in a way, it's, it's, a, it's a bad effect on, on the kids, but it's also been good. It's education for them. That's the way I see it anyway. But we, we all went through the mill. The kids saw a, a lot. A hell of a lot that went on and a lot that we regret doing and we done some terrible things but yeah so i think education was uh, the key you know the kids learnt a lot from it and they can uh, they're anti-drugs you know they don't want to go the way i went they don't want to end up on drugs on the dole wasting and all that We've got lots of hope for the future. Uh, my partner's uh, currently working as a voluntary uh, drug support worker. So basically she's 
Uh, she came through it all with me with the drugs and everything so she's turned it right the way around on its head so now she's working to help drug addicts and she's that's what she wants to do uh, myself uh, well I mean, it's all the help that we got from the clinics and everything the key workers and that that, that really helped it but uh, I've got prospects of college now I want to go to college and I eventually want to start my own nursery uh, well, that's what I would like to do I think a lot more clearly nowadays than I did not so long ago when I was on drugs. You just can't do nothing when you're on drugs. I'm not in the right frame of mind to do anything. But now I'm thinking clearly now, and I've probably learnt a hell of a lot about myself as well through the drug taking and getting off the drugs. And I'm thinking more clearly now than I ever have done. So I'm thinking clearly enough to think ahead and think about what I want to do with my future. Mm. Obviously, I'm 35. I'm not getting any younger either. We would definitely like to move away from the area, perhaps, well, anywhere really, apart from a council estate would do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's definitely move away from the area. But obviously, you need money to do that. So you need to work at something, get the money, and, you know, same old story, isn't it? Yeah.